For all musicians, learning the art of successful practice is essential. Developing practice habits is a skill akin to developing a productive workout routine or successful academic study habits. Athletes never talk about the score of a practice. However, the repetitive skills which dominate any athlete's practice help to create complex skill sets that seem effortless in performance. It is the same for us. There are many strategies that can help us to achieve the fastest progress and allow for the most efficient use of our practice time. A teacher of mine once said that we may spend an hour a week with intensive instruction from our teacher. In contrast, we may practice individually numerous hours for each of those lesson hours. In this way, we are guiding our own development and our teachers offer us support and guidance that direct us towards success. I like to think of my practice time in two ways, the macro, the big ideas and goals, and the micro, the small ideas and goals. We will talk about the macro or our large ideas first. There are several elements to consider when deciding macro goals. The first element and probably the most important is time. How much time can one dedicate to practicing? Whether you are a beginning student who can dedicate 15 minutes five days a week or a concert performer who may dedicate five to six hours a day to refining his or her craft, the effective use of that time will offer the fastest progress. While the common thought is that the more time we can dedicate will usually equate faster progress, this is not always true. In addition, consistent practice is far more effective than cramming. If we practice three hours a week, breaking that time up 30 minutes a day for six days will be far more productive than cramming two 90-minute sessions. The question to ask yourself is, how much time can I dedicate to practice on a daily basis? The honest answer to this will help structure your practice. Really examine your schedule. What time commitment is fair to you and can be adhered to? Once you know how much time your daily practice sessions will be, you can identify some goals. The more specific these goals, the more focused you can be in your practice design. If you have a concert coming up, a goal might be to learn and refine a particular piece by a particular date. Perhaps you want to have faster scales or be a better sight reader. These are both examples of good macro goals. Let's discuss the micro part of our successful practice. The micro part of your practice is the day-to-day -day concepts and goals. How do we organize our everyday practice to be most effective? I suggest taking the allotted time and separating it into three sections. Section one is dedicated to warm up and technique. Section two to new repertoire. And lastly, section three is dedicated to the maintenance of old repertoire. I find that using some kind of practice log helps to keep track of my day-to-day -day practice. A link to a sample practice log has been included in the comments below. Just like an athlete, we can't just jump into our practice of music. Dedicating part of your practice to stretching and warming up with technique is essential. This portion of your practice can also include critical listening and watching of videos to support your understanding of repertoire. Choose technique that supports your goals. I suggest some basic large motion exercises, such as slow open string rest or free strokes, or basic arpeggios like those of Giuliani or Carlovaro. I also suggest practice of scales. Your scale practice does not always have to focus on speed, but instead accuracy and tone production. You may also take technical issues that you were encountering in repertoire and include them in your technique regiment. The next section of your practice should be dedicated to new or developing repertoire. Prioritize pieces based on your goals. Learning pieces for upcoming performances or exams should be given the highest priority. There are a number of strategies you can employ when developing repertoire. Slow practice is a strategy which yields excellent results. Also, breaking down complex passages of music to simpler, smaller sections will offer a more efficient way to solve problems. Always be mindful of what you are doing and how you are doing it. If something is not working, stop and ask yourself why. The last section of your practice should be dedicated to maintaining and refining repertoire. I use this time to work on refining musical ideas, trying alternative phrasing, 
or simply practicing the performance of established pieces. Of the three sections of your practice, this section should be the most flexible. If you have a performance in two weeks, you may need to dedicate more time to the refinement of music you already know. Use this time to work on ideas of musicality. Perhaps record sample performances and analyze them for areas of technical and musical refinement. Here are some suggestions and insights to help guide your practice. Hi, Robert Trent here. Remember, you're an athlete. Act like one. Take care of yourself, get sleep, etc. But I'm going to show you some stretching exercises to do before you start. <clears throat> All athletes stretch out, and we're small muscle athletes, so let's start by stretching our tendons. First, I call these Motown moves. Here you're moving your shoulders, your arms, moving together like this. And then we stretch. These will be we're longer than I'm showing you right now. Stretching the tendons over the f top of the hand, down to the fingertips. And then let's make a fist. We're going to stretch them a little bit more by making the fist. Okay. You'll hold it longer than this, about 20 seconds for each side. Always do both sides. The last thing is moving down to our hands, because we do use our hands. So we start by stretching here. Not too far. Then make a fist. You'll probably do these one at a time, then here, and then finally make the hook, each holding each for about <clears throat> 20 seconds. Hope that helps you on your warm-up. Don't forget, cool down too. Bye. Hi, my name is Andrea Gonzalez Caballero, and I want to share with you some advices about how to practice. The first one will be to write down every day what you want to practice and don't think about how much time you have to spend on it. The second one will be to practice for not more than 50 minutes without taking a break because you have to be focused on what you are doing and if you feel tired, take a rest. And the last one will be to think what you want to improve in each piece before you start practicing it. Because if you don't know what to do, you can't change it. Hello. I like to organize my practice time around three lists. List one is a list of really short passages, no more than a beat or two that are especially difficult and that I have to practice every single day. Because the passages are very short, I only spend two or three minutes on each passage. List two has short passages that I have mostly mastered. I'll practice a passage for two or three days in a row and then move it to the bottom of the list. Again, I only spend two or three minutes on each item. Finally, list three is a list of longer passages that I don't need to practice every day. I may spend 10 minutes on each passage and cover as many passages as I have time for that day. These lists have proved to be invaluable to me, especially when I have a lot of repertoire to juggle and not much time to do it. Good luck. Hello, my name is Aaron Larger Kaplan, and this is a very brief practice lesson. So, Tango and Sky by Roland Dion's. I want to show you how I take a small part and practice it. I then deconstruct it. What is it? And then I take the physical and change the rhythms. Short, long. Long, short. Threes, groupings. Fours. Fives. Sixes. That allows all of the different variations to come together and I can find, possibly, a new way to play it. Dion's loved and encouraged improvisation, so maybe in your piece you find a way to play it and incorporate these new ideas because that's what it is. You're on stage. So I hope you enjoyed this very brief practice tip. I'm Aaron Larger Kaplan. Hi, 
My name is Hilary Field, and I am a classical guitarist and teacher in Seattle, Washington. Here is my tip for successful practicing. Practice slowly. Slow practice will help you achieve your goals and play well at any tempo. When you practice slowly, you can hear the music more clearly, and you will be more intentional with your technique. If there is a difficult transition, slow it down until you can play it in time, even if it ends up being half speed or less. That way, you won't practice any gaps. Once the transition is smooth, play it gradually faster. This works well with the metronome by moving the speed up in small increments. Slow practice gives you time to work out your musical ideas and fix any errors, because they will be more obvious at that tempo. Good luck with your guitar studies and your home practice, and enjoy the music. Hello, guitar fans. I'm Stephen Mattingly, guitar professor at the University of Louisville, with a short practice strategy for you today. The most important thing in my practice is to remain mindful, to be present in the moment, and remember the words of Ricardo Isnaola to say, me, here, today, now. In doing that, I'm going to isolate my challenging spot from a piece by Matteo Carcassi, his Etude Number no. 3. Here it is. As you can hear and see there, there's a large shift from 7th position to 1st position. I'm going to isolate that spot to the moment that the mistake may occur, usually between two notes. In this case, the F sharp, the last note before the shift, and this one, the D sharp in first position, the first note after the shift. To isolate this problem, I'm also going to deconstruct it, as you may have seen in some other videos. One thing that's part of this challenge is the shift, so I'll take that out and only practice moving from one shape to the other. First from the F sharp, to a single note on the fourth string. And then I can begin increasing that. Until I'm down to the D sharp. This can be a fun game and an effective way to practice. Now remember, remain mindful, remain engaged, and always stay positive. practice tip is to remember that there's valuable practice that can happen without your instrument in your hands. So for example, you could gather a few different recordings of a piece that you're playing and sit down with the score and actually jot down some of the interpretive ideas that you hear. If you have video, you could even jot down some uh, potential fingerings or ornamentation that you like. Um, additionally, you can sing or conduct your music. Recently, I was playing a piece and I wanted to do an accelerando and it just wasn't working. So I sang the passage the way I wanted the accelerando to work. And then when I went back to play it, I realized that previously I had been starting a lot faster than what my musical ear had wanted. And then lastly, I'd say save time in your practice for exploring, uh, listening to recordings, watching videos, going to concerts, reading about a composer. For me, exploring has often meant uh, spending time at the end of a practice session or day just sight reading and finding new music to play. So I think all of these things go a long way towards uh, developing your general musicianship and hopefully they help keep you inspired. I just demonstrated an idea from cognitive psychology which is called chunking, and that is breaking a longer phrase or larger amount of information into small groups in order to learn them more efficiently. A good example of this would be phone numbers. If I give you a phone number, 2720178, you can probably remember seven items. If I gave you two phone numbers, 2720178491 you probably couldn't even remember the first one. Uh, so by breaking your phrases and your pieces into smaller motives and melodic cells and learning those and then grouping them together, you develop a more efficient approach to learning and you will memorize your music more easily. As you've seen, these strategies offer a way to structure your practice to build in consistency. Using a practice log can help you see progress from day to day or week to week. 
I used a log to document scale progress over a nine month period. I was able to chart progress and refine my practice to focus on areas of deficiency. In general, practice what you can't do more than the things you already can. Think through your macro goals and organize the steps to achieve those goals. I hope this video has offered some insight on how to develop productive practice habits. Please feel free to leave comments or questions below. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.